In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint Selenar, the spirit of Hish. Okay, so Selenar, magnificent beast, spirit of Hish. It's a very, very big model. So uh, I've primed it with wreath bone. I've got little bits of uh, <laughs> little bits of base coming off everywhere, not from the base itself, but from inside where they've they've gone and got lost. So I want to get that brown started first. So the colour we're going to use for that is Doombull Brown. And I'm using a fairly big brush here, and we just want to brush it over a lot of the uh, the feathers and the body of Selenar. So, as you can see there, I've thinned it down quite a bit. I'm using quite a big brush. This is just a Citadel base brush. Um, and don't worry about getting in on bits of Selenar um, that are going to be white or lighter coloured. Just take your time when you get around um, things like the the headdress and the all the decorative stuff because we we don't really want to get this all over there. So nice and easy work your way around. Follow the box art to see which bits are the darker brown. As you can see there, I'm probably going to need to do uh, two two coats of this, which is fine. But we got a big brush, so we're motoring motoring along fairly quick. And we'll come back and we'll have a little look at uh, lightening it, shading it, and doing all the funky designs that we see on her. Once that's dry we can look to bring out some of the, the colours in it. So I'm just going to dry brush all of the areas we've just uh, painted with some scrag brown. I just want to build this up so I'm not being particularly careful. I'm not going any particular direction. Just be careful and support uh, the wings when you get to them. So nice and simple, just work that scrag brown all over. And you'll see from the, the box art that uh, there's quite a bit of variation in some of the feathers on the back as well. So um, this is doesn't have to be exact. I, I guess that's the, that's the nice thing about this part. So work this scrag brown all the way over the brown parts. Now, on the underside of the wings, I've painted the tips like that. So what we want to do is we want to start working this into the lighter areas because what we'll do is we'll eventually get a nice transition. Now I'm going to do most of this off cam because I need to support these wing tips as I'm doing this dry brushing. Because if I don't support them they may snap. So just bear that in mind. So work your way all over the bits that you've done doing bull with this uh, scrag brown. And again, it's up to you. You can put as much or as little on as you want. But I'm going to put a fair amount in to really turn this into that kind of orangey brown colour that you see on the box art. Next up, we just want to lightly dry brush these feathers with some XV88. So we're doing a lot of dry brushing, but it's all good because it all gets us to the kind of the end goal. It it builds up lots of texture and layers as well, which is nice. And then on the kind of inside here, we can just work it along where we've kind of put those, put that scrag brown. So you can see we get, we're kind of blending from darker to light. Now you might think, well, that's quite a high blend. And on the actual box art, the blend is down here somewhere. And you'd be right. Um, but as we add more and more light to colours, it's going to blend all this in together. So what you'll get is you should get a nice seamless blend. Um, and we'll get that blend with the we'll light the colour a bit further down. So it should come together quite nicely. So make sure you do all the other bits that you've kind of already covered as well. So you can get a, a smooth transition between them. And then we'll come back and go for the next light to colour. The last colour we're going to dry brush for now is just a little bit of Tau Light Ochre. And you can see I'm just moving my brush really quick. Looking to pick up those edges. just so that we get some more uh, variation on there. Come it down through the tail. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the inside with the feathers, whereby we're going to look to just move that all the way down. So do that both sides. Make sure you cover everything with this. 
and then we'll come back and we'll start to really brighten these colors a little bit before we move across to the lighter colors we're going to paint some of these uh, this detailing in here so just take some rhinox hide and water it down a bit so that it's fairly thin maybe go one part paint one part water um it's entirely up to you and, and how your paint is and essentially what we're looking to do is we're just looking to paint on these designs so the good news is there's a kind of guidance on there anyway and it doesn't have to be exactly the same both sides which is always a winner because you don't have to worry about getting that right too much and if the paint is too thin then just do you know just do a second coat on it it's fine there's no no great shakes for that and i'll show you on this bit here how to paint the kind of the design so you've got the little bits of uh feather which kind of go up so essentially what you're doing is you're just looking for some gaps and just paint them on make sure you've got a good tip on your brush and then make sure you do each feather and that will pretty much be it and then we'll come back with the light colors next the first lighter color we're going to use is rakarth flesh and we want to use this to dry brush all of the inside of the wings i'm moving it up to blend in with that kind of brown at the top there if we need to spend a little bit more time just making sure it, it sticks then let's do that and we're also going to move it all the way down the tips of the wings so you can see now it's starting to blend the bits that we've done with the kind of the arrows and stuff and if you want to go back in like i'll probably go back in and reinstate that uh, rhinox hide that i've put there but basically you're looking to work this into all the light areas of the wings and kind of blend it in then these inner bits here we're going to use just use a brush to go in and paint the rack our flesh in there because we need to make that really really pop with some kind of bright colors uh, and we'll do that next and we'll also think about maybe giving some shade to the wings or how we pick out certain feathers so next up we're going to take some pallid witch flesh we're just going to gently apply this to make sure we don't put too much on but essentially we're looking for the, kind of like the center areas just around here just bringing in those blends there now don't worry if yours looks a little chalky we will bring that back to life uh, pretty easily now with a little bit of shading and obviously don't forget to do the kind of the underbelly there as well and again when it comes to this fur here uh, and the bit around the neck, I'm going to paint that in. So I'm going to paint it in with Rakarth Flesh, and then I'm just going to cover it with a little bit of Pallid Witch Flesh. We'll add a little bit of a shade over it to get the, the colour that we want. So don't worry too much about that, uh, because what we want to do now is we want to start to bring some depth back to this and some of that kind of redness that you see on the box art, that reddy brown. To bring back some of that uh, kind of reddy brown, I'm going to take some Gullum and Flesh, and mix it with some contrast medium sort of one to one i was going to paint this all over the kind of brown fur now because we mixed it one to one it's going to be really kind of thin so you can put first coat on let that dry i'm also going to kind of use it on the this part here just to add some definition and we can go back in and, and pick that up later on but put one coat on like i said it's probably one to one contrast medium with uh with gillum and flesh if anything it, there may be a little bit extra contrast medium on uh, than that so just all we're doing is working all the way around all the brown fur and what that'll do is it'll work its way into the recesses uh, add some extra definition and just bring that ready color back and then it's entirely up to you what you do i'm going to have a look at mine if i'm uh happy i'll leave it once it's dry if i'm not happy then what i might do is just give another another coat but you can see there you know it's still a little bit wet but it's really starting to bring out sort of the the definition in the muscle and it just brings it brings the whole thing back to life after that kind of chalky dry brush Next, we want to add some definition back into the feather. So you can see I've done a little bit of that side. And we're going to use some Space Wolves Grey contrast paint, two parts contrast medium to one part Space Wolves Grey. And we're just using this to kind of glaze over it. 
So if you get any bits of it pooling, so if you get, I don't know, like that, we want to move it away from there. We also want to kind of keep things moving in a an upward direction so that it just tints the feathers and settles in those recesses and just gives us a little bit of life. And we'll go back in and we'll kind of highlight it up a little bit next. And we, you know, same for the, the fur really, uh, the brown fur. So just get this all done. Make sure you don't let any of it settle too much in the recesses. And this is just going to give it a bluey grey tint, um, which will dry. You know, just add that definition in. Then you can go back in then, and I'll show you how to do that in the next step. Just to just to add a little bit more of a pop to it. First thing I want to do is I want to brighten up the fur uh, on the front. So I'm just going to take some pallid witch flesh and just draw lines down it to kind of catch the raised parts of it so where you can you can kind of pull it along the edge just to catch it now you can if you want make sure it's all really dry and you can dry brush that but uh, for me I'm I'm happy with it or taking the extra bit of time just to use the shape and edge of the brush rather than kind of going in and, and playing around with the dry brush so we want to do that there uh, and kind of in this bit here underneath the I want to call it, should we call it, we'll call it a face mask and while we've got the pallid witch flesh on there we can paint the face mask as well just to help us along for later so get that done and we'll come back and we'll brighten all that light fur up and then we'll go back and just add some spot highlights on the brown fur let's make everything pop a little bit then so we're going to take some white scar and then we're going to just get this to catch the end of that fur and that should give us a nice highlight on there and then the other thing we want to do is we want to brighten up the underside of these wings a little bit so in some places you can just take the tip of the brush and run the tip of the brush around the outside like that nice and easy nice and straightforward it's so just again with this just take your time you do as little or as much as you want um, I think too much is probably what you'd be in danger of doing um, and the other thing you want to do as well is if you look at the feathers you can see where that space was gray is settled you've kind of got some raised ridges so you want to catch that with the, the white scar as well and you can work your way over them quite quickly just catching those ridges because then you've got three four in some cases five different kind of shades of variation where everything's come together so you can work your way around doing that and then once you're happy we'll just pop a final highlight on the ready fur and that's the main part of selling our done so we can get into the uh, the smaller more intricate details next going to do something similar for the kind of ready brown fur with some ungore flesh so with this I, get, I think we want to use it quite sparingly I'm just kind of using the tip of the brush there just to kind of bring out the impression of the fur and then here we can just kind of bring it down into that lighter color nice and straightforward and with this it really is going to be a case of uh, just just a little you don't want too much because it'll, it'll just accentuate what we've already done just keep that kind of ready brown color because it comes from the same palette and what we're doing now is we're all about making these next few bits pop to really kind of emphasize some of the colors and take away some of that chalkiness we may have left from the uh, from the dry brushing just to finish up selling our we just want to darken up this tip of this tail and that's going to be nice and easy just some wildwood contrast paint just all over the tip and just paint it in so nice and simple careful not to splash it it's not the end of the world if you do it just makes the when we do the base a heck of a lot easier and what we want to do is we just want to kind of take it we'll paint this 
sort of middle section here and then we leave it uh, so it looks like it blends into the dark brown somewhere around here nice and simple so get that done let it dry and that's the main part of selling that done details next so i'm going to call the body for of selling that done for now so the next thing i want to do and this is why i kind of said be careful i didn't listen to my own advice um, i want to get all these bits that are going to be white back to like a oh, white but back to pallid with pallid witch flesh so essentially it's the face mask it's um the back of the the mask here so some of it will still be wraith bone but what we want to do is we want to get a nice even coverage of pallid witch flesh uh, over all of it and then we've got the i don't know what this is i guess i want to say um <clears throat> neck ornament not even sure that's a real thing and then we've got the this kind of these they're not pearls but they're kind of pearl-esque uh, just going along the neck as well so i want to get them in a nice solid pallid witch flesh as well so like i said work your way around uh, it might take two maybe three coats if you put some really dark colors on like i have a little bit there get that done so it's all one color and then we'll go on to it and we'll have a little look at the kind of the gold and these really orna ornamental pieces and i'm hoping we'll go quite quick uh, through it so that we can get the rest of it done and get techless stuck on there with that pallid witch flesh done you can see everything's kind of returned to that kind of brighter pale color so what we want to do is we want to paint um, the bits that are going to be a lighter gold with Rhinox hide. So we've got the big headdress here. And I've thinned the Rhinox hide down a bit, so I may need two coats to cover properly. So we've got the big uh, headdress that goes down the middle there. We've also got all the gold edging. So if we look at uh, this part here, for example, let's make sure that the camera's on focus. We want to draw that down there and we want to catch the inside of it as well just like that and we want to work our way all the way around the trim now this is one of those parts that does take a little bit of time so you need to be patient um, in laying this down but we need to do it so that we've got a good uh, a good base for that lighter gold to come in later on so you know we've got all the kind of swirls to do as well so you can just use the tip of the brush to catch and you can go back in later and uh, repair any errors you've made next up we want to paint all the the kind of darker gold which is kind of warmer gold i suppose so using some retribute drama for this so this is things like the the emblem on the chest here see there you may need two coats on that but it's also all the all the other bits of gold as well so all the i don't want to call them bracelets but i guess accoutrements decorations etc around the model around the legs and if you're not sure just check the box art um, so work your way around, get all that retrobook drama based, and then we'll uh, shade it next. Once that gold is done, we uh, just want to give it a shade, and for this I'm going to use Gullman Flesh. So that way we get a nice warm gold, but we also don't have to worry too much about using loads of different uh, shades to achieve the, uh, the same result. So basically all the gold... That you've just painted just shade it with the the gullum and flesh let it dry and then we'll come back and we'll give it a good highlight next next up we're on to some liberator gold so we can use this for a couple of things um, so we can use it to highlight all the gold that we just shaded just taking our time and that'll give us a nice kind of bumping colour, just that kind of lighter colour gold. Just nice and easy. Using the shape of the model where we can, and the tip of the brush just to catch some edges. 
take our time being careful not to touch anything that we've already finished. And the other thing we're going to do, we're going to use this for the all the decorative pieces as well. So most for the most part we can just run our brush along and it should cover over that Rhinox hide nice and easily. So just work your way all the way around the model, get that covered in, highlight all the other gold and then we'll come back we'll have a look at the uh, the bones for the horns next. For the horns we're just going to base coat them with your shabdi bone so this should cover nice and easily. Make sure you get into all the kind of the nooks and crannies and then when you come to the gold just take your time make sure you don't uh, spill your shabdi bone anywhere. We've also got the half moon crescent to do on the on the forehead as well. So get both sides done. Don't forget to do the top bit and the bottom bit, and we'll come back and shade it. Shading that bone is nice and simple. Just take a little bit of seraphim sepia and just paint it all over the bone. Make sure it gets into those uh, little nooks, the engravings on the horns. Now one thing to remember, when I put this back flat like that, all that seraphim sepia is going to run to the bottom. So it's really important you don't put too much on. Or so much that it'll get out of control. So just do that on all the bone, and then we'll come back and pop a little highlight on the design next. Just want to highlight the, the horns a little, and we're just going to aim for the, the kind of the design that's on them. So make sure I can get this in photo, uh, focus. So what I'm doing is just making sure that using a little bit of wraith bone, which is much lighter, on the tip of the brush, you're just tracing around the designs. And that then gives you that sort of accentuation around the engravings. So just work your way around the horns and highlight the, the crescent as well. And that's them done. Now we'll move on to the tassels next. For all the tassels, we're just going to base coat them with techless blue. So this straight away I've made a mistake. <laughs> I was just about to say, don't uh, take your time when you're going over around the bits you finish. Probably decided to paint it all over the bit of gold there. So I'm going to have to go back and repair that. Um, but ignoring uh, that, make sure you take your time, uh, work your way around and get them all just base coated with this techless blue. And then when we come back, we will highlight them. To highlight the tassels, we're just going to use some uh, Lothan blue and but what we're doing is just looking to highlight strands there and in some places you'll be able to use the tip of the brush just like that it's nice and easy nice and simple so work your way around all the tassels just highlight them with this Lothan blue and then we're pretty much there we just need to do a few little bits and pieces so off cam, I'm going to do all these little bits that are kind of gems. Make sure you've painted them with Pallid Witch Flesh. And then we'll come back, we'll do them. We'll finish off the face next as well. So any mistakes you've made, just tidy up with Pallid Witch Flesh. And then we're on, we'll just have the claws to do on selling art. Then we'll do the base. So to shade the face, we're going to take some Administratum Grey. And we're going to put that into the kind of the recesses. We've thinned it down a little bit. You can see there, I've just worked it into, like I said, those recesses. Now it's not particularly thick, so make sure you water it down. And essentially, just you're looking to just paint it into where there's areas of shadow on the face. So just work your way around the model. If you want to put another one in once it's dry you can do uh, but I think I'm gonna be okay with just one because if you look at the artwork there's not that much uh, distinction there between the the white and the kind of the darker color and if you make any mistakes really easy to just fix that with some pallid witch flesh you can of course if you want to then just pop some very small highlights on 
Uh, I'm using white scar here, just kind of along the nose. Um, just kind of in the eye socket. Just to add a little bit, and then just on the chest piece there, just a little bit of white scar, just to just to make things pop out a little bit, help accentuate the face. So there we are, nice and simple. So we'll do the claws next. That's Selenar done, apart from these little gems, and they're really easy and straightforward to do as well. Painting Selenar's claws, uh, really straightforward. So just we'll use some of bad and black to base them all. So just take your time and be careful when you're kind of getting round the finished fur. So just do this for all of them. So there's five times four paws, which means you've got 20 claws. You get painting lessons, you get maths lessons, whole shebang. So work your way around, get them done. Be careful when you come to this bit because it just saves a bit of clear up and then we'll highlight them next. For a nice easy highlight, we're just gonna take that uh, administratum gray that we used earlier. Make sure you haven't got too much on your brush. I'm just gonna draw it down the front of the claw there like that just to make it look sharp. So do that on all of them. That's selling our done. Next, we'll do the base. So first off, let's get the stonework base. So I'll base coat all the stonework in Carrick stone. And obviously just be careful when you come to the bits that you've already finished on selling our. And also similarly for the model as a whole, we're gonna use a lot of contrast paint on this base. Um, so just when you're putting this on, take your time Swap to a smaller brush when you get to these areas around uh, the finish bits. Um, and make sure that all, because all, we use so much contrast paint that we want to keep this wraith bone uh, base in place as much as we can. Okay, so just bear that in mind as you pop in this Carrick stone on. Now I'm putting it on quite roughly and it's not covering particularly well and that's, that's all right because we're going to wash it and then we're going to highlight it and it just all adds to, to the whole effect. So... All the stone, all the rubble that used to be part of the building with Carrick stone, and we'll come back and wash it next. While that Carrick stone's drying, just going to take some Magos purple and just use this to paint all the kind of gems that I uh, accidentally forgot about uh, when I was getting excited about finishing Selenar. So just paint Magos purple over everything, it'll give you the effect you need. Nice and simple step. And then uh, we'll come back and once that Carrick stone is dry, we will give it a nice shade. Gonna shade the stones with Space Wolves Gray Contrast Paint. Now really important here that you keep this moving and don't let it get on other parts of the model that we want to be uh, to stay light because we want the uh, we want to use contrast paints on them so just keep it moving around let it settle in the recesses and then let that dry fully I'm going to use a hairdryer to speed up that process um, and then when it's dry we'll come back and we'll get this uh, stonework looking looking like the box art looking good it's really easy straightforward so just get this all finished, then we come back, we're good to go. Once that uh, Space Wars Grey Contrast Paint is dry, we want to dry brush everything, a nice circular motion with uh, Grey Sear. So you're going to put this on across all the different bits that you've done and don't be afraid to put plenty on because it's just going to catch those edges there. And just give it that bluey grey look so work all your way around get this uh, onto it all and then we'll come back we've got one more uh, bit of dry brushing to do and that's the kind of the stone and the rocks done and then we move on to everything else using the same brush then I've not actually cleaned it or anything I've just uh, popped in the white scar and now I'm just going to work it along those edges just to catch <clears throat> all those sharp bits and just again take your time when you come up to bits that you've already done or you've already finished don't worry if you kind of catch 
bits like the gold etc because to be honest they're gonna get covered in dust anyway so just keep working your way around catching all those kind of top edges if you do put a bit too much on then just push push against it and it should pick up but get that done and that's the stonework done which means we've just got the vegetation next so generally when you're working with contrast which is what we're going to do here we work from dark uh, sorry from light to dark so you see these little um, I guess they look like wheat wheat chaffs but it's going to paint those in plague bearer fresh contrast paint so if you've not attached them, don't worry about this step, you can move on to the next one, but it's going to give them a nice decent coating of that. And the reason why I said you generally work from light to dark is because we're actually going to do a light colour last, which is kind of all the, the earth and stone. So uh, just work your way around, get all these coloured with Plague Bearer Flesh, and then we'll come back and we'll start the trees next. Next up, we've got a lot of... Uh, vine type thing so for this we're going to just be really careful but we're using militaro green for these vines so just want to be careful not to spill onto the the stonework so just take your time so just work your way find out where if there are any more of these vines uh, all over the uh, the stonework if you want you can pop some of this just as like a, a little like a bit of moss or lichen just growing up there let's work your way around find those vines and then we'll come back i'm probably gonna add some in just like i said just to add some uh, different colors to the base and then we'll do the uh, we'll do the tops of the trees next for the tops of the kind of trees and the foliage i'm using dark angels green and you can see there the kind of the wonder there is contrast paint. It gives you a really nice dark green, but it automatically shades and highlights it for you. So we don't have to do any more work on it. And you know, if you're happy with that, that's great. So get around all these little trees, get this dark angels on, and then we'll come back and do the wood next. And like I said, we'll finish up with the uh with all the kind of rubble debris last. And lastly, we want to do the tree trunks. I say lastly because that's the bit we're going to do before the before we crack on and get the dunes done. I can just see there I've missed a little bit of stonework. So before you go in and finish everything, just check you've not uh, missed anything. So you can always go back in and uh, fix it. Now, this is one of the reasons that we work from... Uh, with contrast paint work from light to dark because that wildwood is just covering up any spillages i've made with the dark angels green which is really nice and easy so work your way around paint all the trunks with this wildwood um, i'm going to go and fix the bits of stone that i forgot and then we'll come back and uh, we'll do the main part the agros dunes bit there that glass there you pick a color any color um, i'm probably going to do some like thematic blue but that can be entirely up to you as to what colour you do that. So get that done and I'll see you back in a moment. And once we've done all that, the last colour we're going to use is Agaros Dunes. And we're going to make sure we put this on everything we haven't painted so far. So all the bits of rock and bits of debris, just work it in with a brush. Get it in nice and easily let that dry now it's entirely up to you if you i'm going to put some grass tufts on this you don't have to it's the joy of basing do exactly uh what fits you fits your army and then we'll come back and i'll see you on the turntable where we get the final shot and i'll have attached techless as well so there we have it selenar the spirit of hish is done and i've attached techless together the two of them look really good and should look fantastic on the tabletop you might notice there's no flock on the base because when I went to get some it seems I've run out so I'm going to have to order some more. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have please leave a comment and a like down below. It really does help me improve the quality of content for the channel. If you'd like to support me then you can using the links in the description. First off my Patreon where you can get exclusive access to me, monthly frequently asked questions as well as some exclusive content. 
You can use the links for Goblin Gaming where you can get up to 20% off all your Warhammer and any other Wargaming needs you have. And there's also my Amazon links for my recommended equipment. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.